Wake up, everybody. Let's elevate your mind. Live your life without. without limits family thank you once again for joining me today i have my special guests again with me but none other than maggie mckell the owner and leader of doctors infection control services and as i mentioned before he has been on the show thank you again maggie for joining me again i'm here in new york and you are in california welcome Thank you so much for having me. It is an honor to be with you and your uh, wonderful guests. So today's topic, family, this is a special episode that we're actually going to release tomorrow because the information is always changing on COVID-19. Today, we wanted to give you updated information as it is coming from April the 26th. So, continue to watch and stay current. But today we have this map up here where Maggie's gonna walk us through and some questions on what is happening today and where do we stand with the COVID-19. So I'm gonna turn this over to Maggie to explain to us the map that's on the screen, which is coming from John Hopkins University of Medicine, which is the Coronavirus Resource Center. And take it away, Maggie. Thank you again. Thank you so much. On the left side of the screen, you see the total confirmed. We talk now about the wallet map. The total number of confirmed cases is almost 3 million to million nine hundred thousand, like this. As well as on your right side is the total number of deaths, which is over 200,000 uh, wow. deaths worldwide. Uh, you can visit this center and you can go through and see how many deaths or how many confirmed cases in each country. <clears throat> if you look at the middle of the screen, you see here the majority of, this is we go by the number of, total number of cases of COVID-19 in the middle map. If you look carefully, you will see higher number in the Northern Hemisphere, except in the um, communist countries, like uh, if you put your uh, arrow like Shannon's doing, you can pick a country and all the information from the country, you can see it and, and, and if you, you can change your arrow and click it. You see here Denmark, you, you can move the screen and see all the information from every country you are around. But mm -hmm. if you, yes, if you look carefully to this screen, you see here the majority is in the Northern Hemisphere, where it is a little bit colder and lower infection in the uh, uh, lower hemisphere, where it is going through the summer right now. Is some are going to play a role in this? This is what we're going to see. And we also are looking for these countries like Australia and uh, um, areas where they, they're going to go to their, they are entering their winter now to see if any infection going to happen there or increase. Or this is New Zealand and uh, if, if there's gonna be increase in COVID-19 there, it tells us this virus is not season, seasonal, it, it lower in, it's seasonal. So it lower with summer and increase in, uh, in winter, like what the flu does. We will see, we are watching, looking, trying to analyze the whole thing. And the far right uh, screen, you're gonna see the trend line for the wallet. Just if uh, uh, Shannon can push the trend here in the here. very right. Yes, 
Yes, and make it bigger. You can see here, if you put your uh, a thing in, in, in a date, you can go down. You see wh wh how this started. This is the date, is wow. it the date and the number of cases. So, so let me ask a question. So right here, as of this date, this is where we are. This is exactly how many reported worldwide. 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 Okay. The problem here is it is some countries, the free world, report cases as is. Mm -hmm. But some other countries, uh, communists or dictatorships, they report World Health Organization don't go out. He received the information from the country itself and reported. So I feel there is some squid or some um, information is not uploaded as appropriate. So, can, so it's probably the, the data possibly can be skewed a little bit. Exactly. Because it is based on the country, the countries reporting this. And they're uh, self-reporting. So is it factual coming from that country? Exactly. You clarified it perfectly well. Okay. And if so, you like to go, yeah. Go so, ahead. so this, this, this number is 2.9 million as of the 25th, which was Saturday. And it's mm -hmm. all predicated on if the country that is reporting the data in is giving factual information. Exactly. Okay. This I just want to make sure the audience understands that. Yes. So if I, if I have 10 cases, in the free world, they report 10 cases. In other countries, they might report two or one or none or six based on their whatever they like to report. World of Health gets get the number from them and put it to add it to this map. Okay. Can we move to the middle slide in US? Because hopefully the US is being honest and reporting each state on what's <laughs> actually going on. Yes. There is no option here, yes. Yeah, so, so talk to us about this particular slide. Uh, okay, uh, you can go to the trend line here. I tell you something to, to understand this is much better. Here is, oh, the America, oh, okay. This is for US, but it is much better to see this line when you go to the critical. Trend. Okay, so and I'm going to go to this one. Yes, go down. Yes, it's the flattened curve. Exactly. And here we will see different countries and where they are. Yes, this is the one. Put your hand exact with the cursor and the on the line. You're going to see this is US, and this is the number of cases reported uh, today or that day. Uh, so that is 32,601. Is this deaths or current cases as a whole? What is this? A relation of most affected countries. Uh, I don't see the header. You see the header of this map? Uh, the header of this uh, uh, slide. Okay. It says outbreak evolution of the current 10 most affected countries. Yeah, but there's a, a, a header above. Okay. Daily confirmed new cases. Okay. This is the uh, confirmed new cases. See, if you I see, see. The US okay. here, you see here the line is almost start to flatten it. You see, mm -hmm. the trend is not going sharp as it was in the, if you go down. So in this period of time, which was around March. 15, it started 15 to go up. So it was going up, but now it's starting to. To flatten yeah. a little bit, right? And left. Yes. Uh, the brown curve is, I think is for France. The brown curve here, the higher, yes. This is for France. You see the sharp increase, then it starts to flatten. Yes. So France is down to almost nothing. 
Uh, you, you see here, yes. One eight eight eight. So a thousand eight hundred eighty eight cases now from where they started. Exactly, confirmed cases. So a majority of the Western countries are started. If you go down, if you go down, you will see each country where we are, and this is U.S. In more details. And the right is Italy, as you see the curve is going sharply down. We still uh, going around in the US. Here is France, is every uh, country that goes, okay? Mm -hmm. What about uh, New York? Tell us a little bit about New York, where you are. So I'm here in New York and um, they are also seeing a trend. I'm actually stationed in the Long Island area. And uh -huh. in this area, they are beginning to see a decrease. When I first got here, almost 85 to 90% of the patients were COVID positive. And um, that was a lot of patients that that was in there that has decreased tremendously and there's been tremendous success in new cases um coming in where there's less new cases coming in and less patients requiring icu management so that's a very good thing so the care is showing that it's working and people are more patients are being discharged there's been left less deaths and less patients having to be admitted into the ICU and less ER admissions coming in, which are a good thing. One thing that's happening in New York, New York uh, is participating some of their facilities in a clinical trial that's called um, for hyperbaric, uh, where they're using oxygenation as part of the treatment. So the title of this is called Hyperbaric Oxygenation for COVID-19 Patients. And it is in a study state. I've actually had a couple of patients of my own that have been participating in this. And what they're saying, they're looking at the safety and scientific validity of the study to see how oxygen will help reduce the spread or even prevent this, uh, the spread of this infection. So it's certainly in the clinical trial state and, and the summary says hyperbaric oxygen therapy treatment will be provided to patients as an adjunct to the standard therapy for COVID-19 patients with respiratory distress. And my hospital is one of the hospitals that's using this therapy. And I've actually had some patients go through it. And it's a 90 minute intervention treatment in the study that patients uh, go through. And what it is, is that after the intervention portion of the study, the chart is reviewed and will be performed and compared to outcomes and interventions versus patients that go through regular wow. treatment. So they're trying to see how hyperbaric therapy oxygenation can help with these patients versus not. And the patients are picked you know, through criteria by the yeah. physicians to see if they're eligible for the clinical trial study, and they also have to agree to it. But it's very interesting to see. I've had some patients, uh, as I said, on, on the treatment, um, uh, but so we'll see what success may come. But that's one of the things that's happening in New York right now. So we have another slide up that, um, you are going to share with us, which is called COVID-19 compared to other common conditions. Can you see that there? Yes, I see it, but uh, it is not PowerPoint, but no problem at all. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, no problem at all. It's not um, a PowerPoint? Let me see, may, let me make sure. Oh, there okay. it is. Uh, yes. Uh, right. The problem is many people, there's the, any uh, sign and symptoms from different diseases, they consider it as COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So just want to clarify, what do you have? It might not be COVID-19. Said that, and I'm going to go through the difference between the COVID-19, common cold and flu and allergy, said that now with any symptoms, 
uh, the hospital normally tests uh, for COVID-19 if you have one of the risk factors that we mentioned before. So per se, for COVID-19, the most common sign and symptoms is fever, dry cough, and shortness of breath. Mm -hmm. What else is, show it to us, uh, as loss of sense of a smell. This is high number of patients lose sense of a smell or taste. Uh, also, children can have COVID-19. Not that many as elder, but children can have it. Uh, what else? Uh, and can you? Okay. With common cold, the ache and pain is common, and sore throat, runny nose, and sneezing because this is common cold. But what's rare there is the fever as well as shortness of breath. This common cold. For the flu, it starts with the flu, the flu starts with fever. Yes, fever is coming, dry cough is coming, headache, common uh, ache and pain, sore throat, fatigue, all this common for the flu vaccine. What's rare and with the flu is two things, sneezing and runny nose sometimes and shortness of breath. It's not common with the flu. For the, um, uh, for the allergies, normally when you have allergies, um, you, you have the same, the same thing every year. So nothing changes this year. So you are familiar with the shortness of breath you have. You have runny nose or sneezing all the time. You use nothing changed from before. So this is allergy, don't mix it with uh, COVID-19. Make sure that there is no sore throat or uh, pains because this is just allergy. Okay, uh, some other question we need to ask. We will no longer go to the slides, but we can ask a few questions. What I can do if I'm sick and don't want to go to the hospital? <laughs> Make sense? Yes. If you come sick, up is what if I'm sick? Yes. And don't want to go to the hospital? Yes. yes. Rest at home. Drink a lot of plenty of fluids. Take Tylenol. Rest. And uh, by the way, this is not cure. Just relax at home and uh, everything will hopefully be fine. If you start, if your symptoms start to progress, please call the hospital or your healthcare provider. Let him know what's your signs and symptoms. And if you need to be admitted to the hospital, this is what you need to take care, to, to, to be careful when you are in a hospital bed. One, make sure that every person, and this is, by the way, applied not only for COVID-19 era, but for any time you are in a hospital. Make sure that your healthcare worker uh, wash their hands. No sick employee can come to touch you. Make sure that uh, not coughing, not sneezing, nothing. Uh, refrain now for COVID-19, if you are not mandated to do a group therapy, please refrain from doing that. And please don't allow any family or any visitor. Anyway, most so as in New York right now, at my current facility, actually visitors are not allowed. We hear, there is I, no visitors allowed, and I think a lot of hospitals are taking that stance, not just in New York, but I know in California as well, that, you know, even though you want to see your loved ones and you want to be there or you want loved ones to be there, they're not allowing visitors coming into the facility. And if they do, it's very, very rare that they allow them in. So... Um, just for safety and precaution. One of the things we're doing in New York is Skyping. Exactly. Skyping mm -hmm. and video chatting. They've, they have a, a, a organization within the hospital 
where you can put in a request and let them know and they will bring up the video uh, iPads or rollers and the family can connect up with the patients. And it's really a good thing because a lot of patients are suffering from social isolation. They're okay. in the hospital, they're lonely, they're you know fearful and um, it creates anxiety. So you now have the opportunity if anyone knows anyone that is in the hospital with COVID-19, ask that healthcare facility what type of things they have where they can communicate to the patients or if they have any kind of visual communication. Yeah. If your phone is not working, ask for iPad or uh, seek help yes. from the hospital to provide you. It is now not only in New York, but all over the country. Yes. I'm just mentioning this just in case. There is uh, some uh, states allow visitation, but hard hit states like New York and California, they are not allowing visitors at all. Correct, any that is so correct. Okay, we're gonna go to the next one, which mm -hmm. is... No, this I answered, the next slide. Yeah. Next slide. Okay. So what do you do to clean your house? Where exactly and how often? I know this has been a challenge for a lot of people on getting disinfectants. They're out, sold out all over the place or highly marked up. Yes, the problem is the CDC just last week released that there is 20% increase in the call, the call that they receive about poisoning from cleaning agents or disinfectants. Really? So most likely we start to be clean and <laughs> disinfecting <laughs> our area. Because 20% is an increase in this calls or poisoning related to the cleaning and um, the most important thing you need to know, hopefully you find you have a disinfectant. The most important thing you need to do is to read the label on the bottom. Read the label. So it gives you instructions how to use this product, number one, effectively, number two, safely. So it is a must. Number two, there is always a contact time written or devil time for the disinfectant to be on the surface. This is very important. By the way, the disinfecting and the cleaning agents are not magic. They need time to kill the organism. That's why you need to leave them on the surface. Read the bottle. If it is one minute, leave it one minute. If it is three minutes, make sure that it's three minutes. If it is 10 minutes, leave it there 10 minutes. So how long does the virus for people, because you've been hearing different things in there, how long actually from research base that the virus can stay on the surface? What is the truth in that? In uh, objects on the surface, how long does it live on the actual surface? There is a study done by the CDC and published early in the epidemic. It shows how long it stays in each surface. I can send you this link and you can post it on your website so okay, people good. knows how long it can stay in anything else. Uh, by the way, if, if your products, when you read it, the effectiveness or efficiency of the product, if it kills the flu or way much better, if it kills TB, tuberculosis, it means this product is good and can cover. Okay. Uh, uh, COVID-19. The other thing I need to tell you that if you're using a solution in a container, please don't leave the rug or the cloth that you are using to clean in this solution. Because we found out there is a quads bind that the chemical, with certain chemicals, you might not be familiar with the name, with certain products, the, if you leave the rug in the solution, the chemical in the solution attached to the rug. And once you use it, bind to the rug. And once you use the solution, 
you are basically using water because all the chemical already in the rug itself. So never leave it there, the rug, just or the cloth, just to dip it left in the solution, get the solution and use it right away. So you are really using chemicals with I uh, see. Okay. This infect the surface that you are doing. Okay. If you are using wipes, which is uh, gonna make it easier, if it tells you uh, the surface, the dual time or the contact time per se, three minutes. So you use generous amount of uh, wipe the surface as long as it leaves thick, uh, um, thick surface, thick amount on the surface. If you need more, get another wipe to finish, to complete your surface that you are cleaning uh, with. Then it leave it one minute to dry. Once it start to dry, it means that it is one minute. Apply a second coat. Once it start to dry, it is two minutes now. Apply the third coat to cover the three minutes. This is the best way to make sure that you reach the dual time or the contact time. But uh, if you like to use the stopwatch, hopefully you can monitor, but make sure that there is a thick coat on the surface for the whole length of the contact time or the dual time. Okay. Okay. Unfortunately, was, the reality is most people don't wait that long. They just wipe. <laughs> it is not magic. I wish it is magic. I know. I'm just being it's honest. Magic. Most people just wipe and keep going. But <laughs> what he is trying to tell us, family, is follow the instructions and the contact time and try to wait and let that solution sink in. But I've seen a lot of people just wipe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. okay, where to focus your cleaning. So these are some of the key areas that we should be focusing on. These are high touch points, right? Yes, you can go through it, uh, Shannon. Yeah, so mailboxes, doorknobs, light switches, refrigerator handles, microwaves, drawer knobs, toddlers, uh, uh, have your toddlers floor and baseboards, handlers in the bathroom, steering wheels, um, you know, uh, extra things. Uh, Dr. Oz recommends shopping bags, just go through and, and, and to use the washer machine. And, and when you put gas in your car using self-serve napkins, I know a lot of them telling you to use gloves when you're using gasoline machines. So um, at once a day, uh, high touch areas. So any area that you're touching all the time is where you should be uh, disinfecting in essence. Exactly. And make sure that when you clean the doorknobs, make sure that you cover the, uh, the, the two sides of the door. Right. Especially the one from the restrooms. Right. Okay. Good. All right. Okay, so now let's go to the next one. And this one is... Uh, there's no masks? Oh, probably I... Okay, you can go to the next one. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. The famous mask now. Everybody's a, a celebrity with the mask now. Yes. <laughs> Some great um, ones, yeah. We encourage people to... You see this beautiful lady? She's mm -hmm. wearing a surgical mask from the hospital, hospital grade manufactured. Please leave this to the healthcare workers because they are in need for this one. But all what you need is something like uh, anything that you can put in your nose and face, it will be great. I will share with you two things. Uh, uh, where to save if they're gonna you reuse the mask, if you're working in a house and you need to reuse the mask, as well as what material you need to make your uh, mask from, if you are doing for yourself, like that gentleman. Uh, the first one, you can uh, 
move to the next slide. You see here, there is uh, the gentleman wearing a surgical mask. The other lady is wearing N95 mask. If you wear them, try do your best. Every time you touch the mask to clean your hand because you can take stuff from the surface of the mask and touch your face, touch any surface, you already contaminated the surface. Um, 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 uh, if you wanna save it, the mask, please get a paper bag, not a plastic bag, and keep your uh, mask inside. So, oh, I forgot to bring my masks. Okay, if you are wearing the surgical mask, which looks like this, try to fold it so the inside, which is touching your face, be outside, okay? And grab it and put it there. So the inside of the bag gonna be clean and do your things and grab it and from the outside and put it back in your face. So explain to them why paper versus plastic so they understand about the mac, mac, uh, bacteria forming within the plastic versus paper. Yes, the plastic make um, higher humidity that help the organisms and the bugs to grow more and faster with the plastic back especially going to zip it, automatically going to zip it, so it increase and trap humidity and cause more infections. That's why we are encouraging everybody to use the paper bag to save the mask. Also, one of the things that you can uh, protect your uh, cell, now we, many hostels now here, we are pushing mandatory that person to wear a face shield above the mask to protect the mask as we protect the eyes. We, we do that in New York. We, everyone that has direct patient contact, at least where I'm, where I'm working, you have to have a mandatory face shield on um, exactly. with your mask. And they give everyone paper bags that use. Fortunately for me, um, because I brought masks that I had, as I mentioned the last time, from <laughs> California to here, I don't have to reuse my mask. I can use one, uh, uh, you know, throughout uh, there. But they are reusing masks to conserve, and um, and everyone's giving um, paper bags as well. So it's definitely happening here. Yeah, and it is for COVID patient or non-COVID patient. Mm -hmm. Because now we don't know anything who has what. I it's have like we used to do. You're treating everyone as they're potentially infected. Exactly. exactly. Because what some people get tested and some people it's not. I okay. have a patient here in uh, California where we, we tested the patient first time, negative, second time, negative. The physician insists when it is the third time. We um, personally, as well as the administration, please don't do this. The patient is negative. The physician insists he is a COVID patient. Third time negative. Fourth time negative. <laughs> then he just did the spirit of in the fourth time. Yeah, I know someone that personally, a family member, that they kept testing and they were negative and they kept retesting and retesting. And it really wasn't anything to do with that, but it was you know, a respiratory oh, yes. bronchitis type thing that they had that they would get all the time. So, exactly. Okay, so we talked about the masks and these are kind of what you spoke of already. This is just uh, reminding that. Now the best material for homemade masks you have at the bottom there? Yes, it is by, through Dr. Ari, Aram Elias that she recommended that to had to be comfortable. Number one, so you can wear it not to be harsh on you. So, so the material she picked is the any tea, any older t-shirt you have or pillowcase you can use to make the mask off. It will be enough and sufficient as well as comfortable to use. I will say that wearing masks all day long can be harsh on the face. 
and many people have broken out in their face. I fortunately right now have not, even though you have it on for many, many hours, but a lot of people are getting irritated in the skin from having the mask on and having breakouts and they're you know having a lot of skin issues in the healthcare and I'm hoping again that doesn't um, be the case for myself but uh, it definitely wearing those N95 or surgical masks is all day long especially the N95s can have some um, irritation to the skin. Yeah, either a certain ointment, allergic ointment, the lasage or uh, first aid stuff, we can put it uh, where the contact area. So yes. The, mm -hmm. the skin from touching directly the mask. If we have the luxury to have different types of masks, definitely we're going to change the. Uh, yeah type of the mask <laughs> yeah so it will not be sensitive to the patients okay so testing is on everybody's mind still who's getting it who's not why so uh let's talk about this slide here on testing yeah in april 15 abbott came up with a very fast test we used to have that this to come back to us in four six sometimes seven days to get the result. This is run action five minutes, but we can get the result up to 15 minutes. It is the antibodies. The good thing of this machine, the thing that all, most hospitals, most lab have this machine, they just gonna add this uh, new cartilage so they can do that this, and they can do run 100 to 200 test per day per machine which may give us good volume and it tells us a good idea where is the population around us because it tests the antibody what this means <clears throat> uh, when we get exposed to the virus uh, it was the, the, the few slides back but no don't show it no once we get exposed to the virus, the body develop antibody against this virus. So uh, trying to kill the virus once, uh, to get rid of the virus. So uh, this is the antibody that we are testing. We are not testing the virus, we are testing the antibody. So the disadvantage of this test, it can be negative while the patient is positive. Why? Because the patient did not develop the antibody for uh -huh. the virus. Mm -hmm. So it can take up to from one to 14 days, sometimes 21 days, something that 28 days. So the patient, so it's not used for diagnosis. It tells me that if the patient is uh, have this antibody exposed to the virus before or not? That's all. So if it is negative, it means that it's still patient developing. If it is positive, it also can be deceiving because I might get exposed to another different type of coronavirus and I develop uh, antibody to that. The good news is that we don't have that many uh, antibodies to different co uh, coronaviruses, so this option is not bad. Um, so, so for the average listener, explain to them that if they, so, so that they can understand if they have the antibody, does that make them greater risk or less at risk, or they're immune that if they would not be sick to the virus, because so people can understand what does that mean? If I'm positive, for I, I'm immune to it, what does that mean to me? For a lay person, explain to them so they can understand that. This is a very good question. So far we know that the antibodies, meaning the antibodies, we're still in the process of uh, determining what is the level of antibodies inside the blood that good enough to give real protection for okay. the Okay, so patient. it's still undetermined what the, it's still undetermined. 
the the the, the uh, percentage or yes the uh, number of antibodies in to decide oh this person is immune this person is unimmune however any antibodies mean that you have better chances to fight right. the disease than the one who is negative for this test. Correct. You but the higher the number, the more protection your body has exactly. to fight this disease taking over you. Exactly. Okay. The other disease, the, this that came out, you might change the slide, is the uh, test, saliva test. Mm -hmm. Saliva test came in through Roger University, and this is last week, uh, April 22. The good news this after it was read in April 17, four days, uh, five days later, Yale University released a study saying that, hey, the uh, saliva, saliva is still, we have the same volume of the virus has the same sensitivity and consistency uh, as the one that we get from the nasopharyngeal. This is very good news mm -hmm. because nasopharyngeal news, it means that you need to go very back. It needs to, to be done by a healthcare professional. Mm -hmm. But Close this is- contact and- Yes. The only disadvantage, advantage till now, and that it needs to be done by a health and healthcare setting. So we still have to have healthcare worker taking their time, their precious time, as well as burning more PPEs, personal protective equipment, which we are in bad need for them now. The good news is that is that uh, the lab corp, the, the one that developed this vaccine is working to remove this requirement so it can be done at home, saliva. You just mm -hmm. spit in a cup and this is gonna be the test you are doing. And this is a very promising test. It's a very good one. The next one is just approved also in April 21st by FDA. This is the first home nasal swab sample. You just put it in saline, the regular saline uh, by LabCorp also. And it's gonna be available and commercial within a few days in your home. You can do the test. The good thing in this test, it is PCR or they are, it is, you are testing, you are testing the virus itself, not the antibodies. Mm. And it is nasal, so it isn't just put it in the swab in your nose and put it in the test tube, and you are done. You don't need now. To this to still has to be with the doctor's order right now, so far, yes. And it is not that available commercially, okay. Uh, it's going to be available within the next day. It will save the health care worker time, PPEs, walking to the health care office or something. You can, they can send it to your home. You can do it and you can send it back or drop it on any area. This is a very good promising, as well as it is testing the virus itself. So it tells me, do, do I have the virus in my nose or not, period. Okay. Uh, we have few new studies, very interesting studies. Because everybody to wants to know about the vaccine. Is there one coming or not coming? <laughs> and how soon is it coming? Uh, Oxford is started the trial this week. So this is very good. At least by the time we need the vaccine in the next fall, we can have some data out of Oxford. Uh, here, a um, few universities are working on. Um, uh, one of them is already made a vaccine of SARS and now it is in the uh, preparation with the army to start the trial in September. But I know many um, manufacturers are ready 
or, or preparing to start the trial very, very soon regarding the vaccine. The good, another good study that mentioned by President Trump last Thursday, that higher temperature and humidity, as well as direct exposure to sunlight, quickly kill the coronavirus. Uh, so Bill Moran, the head of science and technology, directorate on the Department of Homeland Security, they did this study and they showed a powerful effect. The same thing we see when we showed the map of the world, which we started with. Mm -hmm. We saw the majority of the incidents in the upper hemisphere where it was cold in January and February when the disease is spread in March and April, while it is less ex spread in the uh, lower hemisphere where they have summer right now. Uh, we were expecting so um, um, it's supported also by the common cold, which is mainly coronaviruses, are mainly during the winter time. Uh, however, we have some very few cases of common cold during summer, but the majority are there, as well as I mentioned the map. Another study, if you don't mind. Stanford University did a study with the Santa Clara County. Santa Clara is one of the hottest spots, actually the first epicenter in the United States where the outbreak uh, happened there in nursing home. The, the study showed that uh, uh, in the Bay Area, in this county, we might have 85 times higher than reported cases. Mm. So it means that we reported just one case out of 10, one case out of 20. What this tells me, it tells me that we have higher immunity in the population because they test the antibodies. They did advertising through the Facebook. Anybody want to come to, to, to be tested? And they tested the antibody. So they found the number of people with antibodies, which means that they are people that exposed to the virus, mm -hmm. is way higher than what we reported as confirmed cases. You know what I mean? So yes, they said but, the mm -hmm. it is 85, 85, 85 times the number that we are reporting. That means that higher immunity in the population, which will help us when we reopen the country for this. Uh, and also, once we have this higher number of people who are exposed to the virus, it's going to take down the death rate out of the virus. Mm -hmm. Now, it is stated around 2 to 4 percent. Well, this number will go to 0 0.1 to 0 0.06 percent. So it shows that this virus is not that dangerous as we thought, but it is noble disease. We are not aware of, so this is why we need the, this study is limited because it was in the Facebook. Anybody has Facebook come. Uh, also it asked them to go to a center. So anybody has a car, mm -hmm. that's why the majority, the, 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 the white women were higher representative while Hispanic and Asian were not that represented in this mm -hmm. study. However, this is giving us a good idea where we are with the, um, with the commun immunity in the community around us. It is called herd immunity, which means that it is how you get exposed to a few, few amount of the virus and you develop resistance and the community spread and it develop immunity against the virus mm. when it shows up again. Okay. All right. Okay. So this one here. Okay. This is, we start to gonna say problems or this is what it is. <clears throat> oh, this is the COVID. Uh, okay. Yes. This is the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration. 
Warn it again is uh, the great drug that we, everybody's using, hydrochloroquine and the chloroquine. <clears throat> um, that they recommended that to be only administered under healthcare supervision and preferably in hospitals. So because there is some studies in the Brazil, they stop it and uh, one case in France, they were doing studies and they find uh, cardiac arrhythmias. So they took one of that person off. Uh, potential cardiac side effects were published by Mayo Clinic at the end of March. And the, the problem is the hydroxychloroquine is safe by itself, but adding the azithromycin to it or z back to it increase its uh, effect on the heart and so it causes some arrhythmia. That's why they said that it is much better to be administered in the hospital where the person is really supervised and as well as EKG is done um, continuously. To yeah, sure I want to add on this that it's very important that when it comes to any medication, that people not just self-medicate themselves, yes. you know, not just related to the coronavirus, COVID-19. It's important that taking any medication that you're doing it under the advice and under the management and review of your healthcare provider, because medications and herbs and vitamins have different interactions that happen. And if you just start taking your neighbor's medicine or your friend's medicine, or you start doubling up on medications, you can actually cause more harm to your body than you would think. So it's very important that not only what we're talking about today, but as a whole, that you should not be self-medicating, even if you hear something on the news that says this will make you better. You need to make sure you're consulting your healthcare providers and that there's a review of your medications and your medical conditions to make sure it's safe for you. Because what works with one individual doesn't necessarily have the same outcome for someone else. Perfect. This issue was uh, released last week. Okay, so now we have problems. Uh, started to show up, but started showing problem. Uh, let us go to the problem that we might face. The head of center, oh, back there, back. All right. Back, the head of center for disease control said that warning again is a second wave of coronavirus that can be catastrophic. Oh. And the Jonathan man came out again to clarify it, that saying that if we have next season, COVID-19, in addition to the flu circulating in the same season, we might have a catastrophic time. So he encouraged everybody to be vaccinated for the flu. So at least he will be uh, free from one side, only facing COVID-19, if we don't have a vaccine by that time. It would be better- So for everyone to be clear, they're saying that in the fall, which is the time that we usually get the flu that kills yes. thousands of people every year, this is um, true. comes out that they strongly recommend that during that time that you at least get the flu vaccine to kind of guard your body and your immune system that should a second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic um, a, a, you know, rise during that time, you're, you won't have a double whammy. This is true. And it will not affect the healthcare system with higher number of cases. And we go back to the high curve and we try to flatten it. The one thing uh, that I want to talk about um, as you, you're saying this, that I want to emphasize is that what can we do as individuals is stay healthy and get our bodies in a physical condition that we're not in a compromised state by taking care of our health and making sure we're managing ourselves on an ongoing basis. If anything that has been a takeaway from this 
God awful, dreadful disease that have just torn families and lives and the country apart is that we have to live a more healthier lifestyle as a whole. Because what has been evident in truth is that people with co-existing or comorbidities for the language for people to understand, people with currently having medical conditions have failed demise to this disease much faster where many of them were not able to recover or many of them are still in the, are they going to make it or not make it? And may or may have residual effects long term. So it is important that our takeaway is that let's live a more healthier lifestyle and be in a physical condition in our bodies that if anything does happen again, we're we're able to withstand it. This is how your program is important. Live yeah. life without living, because you have to be healthy. And uh, the majority of high risk thing, high risk factors are hypertension, diabetes, obesity, heart diseases, and so all all this we can control by uh, eating healthy, exercising, um, doing all the things that uh, Shannon does every week with this uh, podcast. Yeah. All right, let's go to 30 different genetic variations. This is a very good one here. Yes, um, there is a study came out of the Chinese from a professor in China, uh, saying that um, he found 30 different genetic variation in this uh, and the virus. The study was carried out by Professor Lei Langan and released Sunday, April 19. And number one, we don't believe anything coming out of China right now. <laughs> and if this is true, this is going to be complicating the situation for us. And it will need uh, not a single uh, vaccine, or we might do it like what we do with the flu. We gather samples around the world and we pick the three most or four most common viruses around and put them in one vaccine. And sometimes we hit, sometimes it will miss. <laughs> so I'm hoping this is not true, but uh, we this is uh, not been reviewed a study. And um, uh, we have to look at it carefully because it gave us uh, uh, it opened a new kind of world for us but we need to confirm or disconfirm okay. by more studies well hopefully this is not a truth because <laughs> it will be definitely something that would be devastated to the world not just our country yes okay reflection Looking back, you mean reinfection? Oh, reinfection. I said reflection. <laughs> I'm looking back on where this is coming from. Yeah, reinfection. Oh, yes, yeah. Reinfection. Um, in every line, uh, South Korea that uh, mentioned that there is a 51 year old man recovered from COVID 19 and became negative, then the disease reappeared on this person. Um, I tested positive again. The question remained, if this person really recovered, then reinfected, because there is um, reinfected or just or the same disease and the, the same virus is still, it's just reactivated. The other fact is, the other question is, um, uh, are they really the person who is really negative when he was released from the quarantine or not? So we are just asking, if the disease is really cured, if the patient was negative when it, the patient 
a discharge, or it is a new infection, but sometimes we can get the flu two times a year or three times a year. Every time with different uh, type of virus. You know what I mean? So there's really still research in this area. It's not clear on whether this is true or not. Yes, and most likely our belief any virus develop a strong immunity. Uh, how long it takes, uh, it depends from uh, one to another. But uh, viruses normally give solid immunity. So we're still under studies. Uh, we cannot know if this is reactivation or new infection with a different type of the 30 viruses that the gentleman said from China, or it is just it, the patient was never recovered. So it now, is there to... any research in the United States? Are any reinfection rates being trended or tracked here? No, no. There's only this gentleman in Southern Korea and Chinese that mentioned that they have 100 cases of uh, patient that uh, reinfected with the virus, but no real study that we can, uh, because now we don't trust anything out of China. So is that something that we're going to be looking at here in the United States? Absolutely. Now we don't have any one with reinfection. So no one that have come forth that said, I have it, and, and, yes. and it was gone, and now I'm back again and I have it. Yes, so far. Okay. So, but it need, we don't have enough tests to test everybody and to do follow up and monitoring. It takes some time um, to monitor uh, how the antibodies, how long it lasts. And but there is a there is a placehold that should this come up, we would start trending and tracking that. Exactly. Okay. Is, is there is any reinfection or not? But uh, the majority of people. Ah, thousand thousand recovered from the uh, coronavirus and i'm telling you there is one in south korea hundred in in china if they are correct uh, reinfected it is a very low number and not substantial because we still have some question to ask if this is reinfection or it is the the person was not Cured uh, to start with. Yeah, I do know that um, certainly here in New York that they're being very careful with not releasing people too early, too soon. And, you true. know, make even if they're starting to show some improvement, because the one thing they don't want is people to be reinfected. As a matter of fact, even when they're discharged, there's instructions that they're encouraging an additional 14 days of quarantine at home, even after being discharged from the hospital. So um, I, I will say that they're taking tremendous caution and having a lot of education and that the team is very careful not to, you know, sometimes the patients are like, I wanna go, I'm ready to go now. And they'll explain and take the time and say, we want you to go, but we want you to go healthy and stable and not have to be readmitted or run the risk of this, you know, reoccurring again. So, you know, certainly where I'm working, it's, it's, it's certainly a lot of care and attention to prevent it from reoccurring again and instructions on even going home, you know, continuing the self-quarantine and, and educating them as well. Um, this is very important, especially for the nursing home, patient discharge to nursing home. As far as I know, and we are aware in here in California that the problem of New York, uh, not only the logistic situation of the city and the state, but also they did not control, they discharged some patient to nursing homes which they spread the infection over to the nursing home. Now we have the huge curve of cases that surge yeah. of cases that we had in New York. So basically to discharge a person to a nursing home, normally the county intervened to make sure that everything is okay. 
testing the patient negative and sending to the nursing home where he will also continue to be in isolation Good. for extended period of time depending on the county where the patient. So I totally agree with you. The person shouldn't be uh, in a hurry to be discharged. Just take your time with the hospital. The hospital, their money, they get their money if they discharge you earlier, okay? <laughs> <laughs> if they want to keep you, it means that it is really very important to... Yes, 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 yeah. Okay, protection. Some people think that uh, using saline solution, water or salt or to spread it or to uh, irrigate the nose. If you feel it, do it. But however, it might give you a negative uh, nasal swab or nasopharyngeal swab. If you do it and you went to, or you go to, to do the test, the test will be negative because you already removed it and uh, the virus from the area we are testing for. So if you feel to do it, do it, but it is not a, a solid thing because the virus can stay in the pharynx. I was getting ready to say, it, you may get a negative there, but it could still be in your body. Exactly. So, <laughs> yeah. Clean it up, but it is there. Down and lower and going to your lung, and you've got a sense of, full sense of security, but if you feel it, do it, but don't do the test in the same day at least. Okay, <laughs> all right. So now in the beginning, everyone said the babies, the children, not at risk. Now we're seeing that's not necessarily the case, right? This is true. Um, if the mother is, positive or just to have some symptoms and we are testing and the testing is pending or just the mother is person under investigation, we have to do the following. Dad shouldn't attend the delivery as we used to do it or the following visit, the same thing for the other sibling. They can watch the delivery over by the uh, iPad, as you mentioned, or iPhone or whatever uh, thing they can, but they are not allowed in to protect the family. Um, the mother and the newborn would be separated. Much better important to be separated from the mother. However, if the mother insists to have the uh, baby with her, the baby has to be six feet from the mother at all the time with the breastfeeding. Uh, we don't recommend the breastfeeding, uh, breastfeeding directly. They can get the milk out and another healthcare professional can give it to the baby so the, she is not within the six feet from the uh, baby uh, to infect the baby. Uh, the baby is going to be in isolation room with the negative pressure because in case that we need to do more aggressive invasive procedure, the baby is already in a negative pressure room. Uh, a newborn has to be bathed immediately after delivery to remove any excess of viruses that might be in his skin that he might acquire in his passage. Again, breast milk is very crucial. It gives more than food for the baby. It gives um, antibodies for the virus, very crucial antibodies. So we encourage breastfeeding, but not directly. It has to be uh, breastfed by the pumped by the mother, stored in the refrigerator, and then passed to the maybe by a qualified healthcare profession. Uh, a staff will be using personal protective equipment all the time, as we know, with this patient, and we need to test the baby as soon as possible. Okay. okay. All right. So as we're wrapping this up here, 
Yes. What's the takeaway for today on the follow-up? This is what I'm, I'm just having some fun with how yeah. people are reacting to, to the crisis that we are having. Here this so beautiful young and people say thank you, essential worker. God bless you. God bless us all. Very yes. good and creative by this young and they are smiling. Anything we can do, we get they get they get busy as well as uh, showing a great due to the people who really sacrifice themselves to help others, which is essential. Yes. And I echo that as we're closing this out. Um, that get more, uh, I, I think that although this has been devastating, but to see America come together yes. as one and people show their love and support through banners, uh, even here in this community, I, I tell you, at, at the hospital where I work, the community here is phenomenal. They buy food daily for healthcare workers at this hospital. This People true. within the different departments, I don't know if they rotate it, I don't know who's coordinating it, uh, but it's just a beautiful thing to see the different food with notes coming in thanking the healthcare workers from snacks to lunches and various different things that they're doing because they recognize that where they maybe themselves are unable to provide that service, having essential healthcare workers or essential workers as a whole being on the front line, putting their lives on risk, denying their loved ones time is a blessing. So it is beautiful to see, it's beautiful to see all the love and appreciation that's being shown to essential workers across the world. And we join in that as well. I wanna thank you, Magdi, once again, for coming in, giving us more information and knowledge about where we stand today. I was extremely impressed with that first calendar, that, that, that not calendar, but that whole global look of that map. So I wanna correct myself, not the calendar, but that map to really show the breakdown from the world to the United States to the total deaths. And I thank you for, I know you have many clients and you're running from one end to another and spending endless hours and, directly taking care of your home front, but willing to share your knowledge with Living Your Life Without Limits family so we can get a better understanding. And family, as we're closing this out, if you have any particular questions after you've seen this presentation, please hit me back at Living Your Life Without Limits at info living your life without limits, uh, dot com and I will get those questions answered from Mandy and we will get them back to you directly. Continue to stay connected. Again, my goal with this platform is to educate, to inform, and to inspire. The rest is up to you because I want you and your loved ones and your family to live your life without limits and that includes the total life, physical, financial, spiritual, and health-wise, emotional. So these topics that we bring to you are designed for you. Again, thank you once again. Continue to love yourself and take care of yourself because guess what? You're worth it. God bless you all and God bless my guest, Maggie, for joining us again. Thank you and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us here at Living Your Life Without Limits with your host, Shannon Jackson. You always know she always brings you quality content all the time with each and every episode she creates, and that is just for you. You know, Shannon has done her part. Now's the time for you to do yours. You need to take action. Show her your love. Click on that subscribe button and get your content every single week. Quality content you can find nowhere else. Want more content on the go? No problem. Go to our website at livingyourlifewithoutlimits.com. 
We're also on the social media sites like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Reddit, LinkedIn, iTunes, and Spotify. Thanks again for joining us today. Tune in next time for another episode of Living Your Life Without Limits and subscribe today.